What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to Azerinth Healer, Book 1 by Rhaegar. Chapter 33. Hashtag Traveling. That night, Ilya continued through the city towards the North Wall, and soon found herself in front of the store she'd seen earlier in the day. The cartographers. She found it open despite the hour, strolling inside before she started to browse. Five minutes later, she found what she was looking for and brought it up to the counter. Night Owl, she asked the clerk. He was hunched over a book with a small lantern next to him. The man raised his head slightly to look at her, obviously annoyed about the interruption. What is it? She soon realized the map itself was far too expensive, but luckily the shop had an alternative, and so she paid the clerk to copy the map into her notebook. It wasn't perfect, but it got the job done. Even so, it was by far her most expensive purchase thus far. But she felt it was worth it. A nomadic adventurer needed at least some idea of where they were going as they roamed about. Various cities and countries were listed, including estimated travel times and small mentions of landmarks that to look out for. Her errand complete, Ilya went back outside into the night air and arrived at the North Wall. Checking the other side with her sphere, she simply blinked through and continued into the night. She first broke into a jog, and then a sprint. After five minutes of running, her runes came to life and fire started to dance around her. Certainly faster than a caravan. What followed was a sequence of running, hunting, and sleeping. The cool weather didn't bother her. She didn't even consider selecting a fire enhancer skill to make herself warmer, as she was already warm enough, likely just a consequence of her high vitality. The first three days of traveling passed without interruption. Ilya enjoyed being alone and lost herself in the speed, the views, and simply being free in the dangerous wilds. In those three days, she figured she had traveled as far as the caravan would have in a week and a half. With her very small need for sleep and enhanced body, she was much faster than most normal travelers, but it was being alone that made the biggest difference. Even though some adventurers could match her for speed and endurance, they most likely still had slower members in their parties, or at least some people who couldn't easily forgo sleep for a couple of days. Finally, Ilya reached the base of Karth, knowing now on its opposite side though now on its opposite side to where Riverwatch had been located. It hadn't been hard to find as the massive mountain towered in the distance, even from miles away. The wind was blowing through her hair as Ilya scratched the top of her head. Where the fuck do I go now? she asked the wind. Sadly, she received no answer. The mountain was huge, and according to her sketched map, the city of Dawn Tree was somewhere halfway up this side of the mountain. I need a road to follow. Seeing how easy it was to get to the mountain itself, she had never really followed any of the roads she had come across so far. They often diverged from the straightest path to the destination for various reasons. Reasons that Ilya didn't really care about, until now anyway. It took her nearly five hours of constant running before she finally found a road that led up the mountain. She wasn't sure if this one led to Dawn Tree, but it was the best she had at the moment. As she started following the hard-packed earth, she soon came across other travelers. At first, there were only lone teams of adventurers, but as time went on, there were some carts as well. Seeing other people running or galloping through, the, through on horses, Ilya didn't see anything wrong with continuing as she had been. However, she did stop to ask someone about where the road led, and was pleased to hear that it indeed was the road to Dawn Tree. The confused look she got likely meant that either one should know such a thing after traveling so far, or there simply wasn't anything else up this mountain. Another four hours of running later, Ilya finally came upon what looked like a dam. A massive dam. It was, in fact, the stone wall of Dawn Tree, half-built, half carved into the mountain's side. Elise stopped in her tracks and continued at a walking pace, a bit stunned by the sight. This magic thing really puts medieval architecture on another level, she thought, as she looked upon the nearly 200-meter-high structure. 
that blended nearly seamlessly into the mountain on either side. Like a half-finished carving, nothing could be seen behind the wall itself, and while the rock simply continued into the mountain on her right side, on the left side, there was a straight drop that went further down than Ilya could see from her current angle. It took another fifteen minutes to reach the gate at the bottom of the wall, where an assortment of guards with rather high levels checked everyone who went inside. Some were even a higher level than Ilya. Reason for coming, one of the guards asked with a rude sneer down his long nose. Her cracked and repaired armor perhaps wasn't as quite as imposing or impressive as it had once been. <clears throat> Visiting a friend, she answered, shrugging. The guard wasn't amused, though, and he motioned two other guards to stand nearby. Trying to be funny, eh? Those visiting a resident must present name and title. Actually, I don't care. We'll see why you're really here soon enough. Grab her! The guards advanced towards her while the other travelers either looked on with interest or tried to get out of the way. Alice Folkspear. I'm a friend and I'm on my way to see her, she said, lifting her hands placidly. I have a letter from her with me. The guards hesitant, hesitated immediately upon hearing the name. It looked like it held a certain amount of weight in Dawn Tree. What am I getting myself into, Ilya wondered. But she got the letter out of her pack nonetheless. I hope some good fights at least. She handed the letter to the guard, who had first addressed her, who examined it carefully. That's the original seal. Please excuse us for offending you, young lady. The once obnoxious guard apologized mechanically. She's with the folk spears, guys, he informed his colleagues, waving them back. Either he's not used to being nice, or he really just wanted to mess up someone's day. Ilya grabbed the letter from the abrasive man's hands and strode through the gate before anyone else could change their mind. The wall was massive. It took her a full minute to pass through the gate on foot, and it was more akin to a tunnel, reaching the other side, Bright sunlight blinded her for a split second before she could take in the city before her. It stretched downward and into the mountainside's natural valley for hundreds of meters. Houses of stone filled the entire place, and colorful flags and banners flew above numerous rooftops. There were temples and what, look, and what looked like forts and castles. High above the city, the rock of the mountain formed a natural wall, and atop even that was another man-made wall with defensive structures and patrolling guards. Hoping to avoid any further questions, Ilya quickly made her way into the city, descending the first fifty steps and entering the city proper. The now familiar noise of a medieval city greeted her as adventurers, merchants, and carts made their way here and there. The city stretched much further than Ilya had first thought. The mountain seemed to have formed a basin in which the city was placed, and the lower parts of the city were overcast by stone. And right where the opening would be, they had built their wall. It would only be feasible to attack the city from the air, and the citizens of Dauntry certainly knew that. Nearly every bigger building, and certainly every castle or fort, had several rune-colored cannon-like devices that Ilya assumed must be some sort of anti-airship machine and likely even more mages or rangers who were specialized in ranged combat were employed as guards. The cities I've been to so far were nothing compared to this. Ilya stood there, remembering the attack on Riverwatch. Size-wise, the cities were rather similar, but everything else was night and day. I enjoyed being out in the world, though, so I'll go check on Alice and then leave again as soon as possible. Maybe find that dungeon the adventurers and... Salia spoke about, or go to the bathhouse again. Her thoughts were interrupted when she noticed an incredibly light tug on her armor. Seen behind her, with her aura skill, she quickly found the culprit and grabbed his arm. That's not yours, little man, she said, and put pressure on his arm. The boy immediately released the decoy pouch he had taken from her. He was skinny, dirty, and covered in scabs, but his eyes were bright as they darted about, looking for an escape route. Prepared to let the kid go, Ilya suddenly had a different idea, and removed two silver from her actual coin pouch that was a bit more hidden inside her armored skirt. Lead me to the Folkspear residence, and these coins, 
these coins are yours. How does that sound? The kid's eyes widened, and he quickly nodded his acceptance. He struck up a quick pace, obviously excited to get a whole two silver coins for this little amount of work, and they reached one of the big castles in a short while. Ilya handed the coins over and took in the structure before her. Within her sphere, she saw the kid already quickly sneaking away, probably hoping she wouldn't change her mind and come after him. She didn't, though, and she soon approached one of the guards at the massive gate. I'm here to see Alice Folkspear. My name is Ilya. She handed over the letter to the guard, who took his time to study the seal and the letter itself. He looked her up and down before shrugging. I'll have someone tell her you're here. Please wait a moment, he said, before gesturing to a young woman behind the gate. The moment turned out to be many moments, though, and Ilya even witnessed a change of the guard. Ilya Spears, Ilya, who was now leaning on the wall and dozing slightly, saw a woman approach. Yeah, that's me, she waved, slightly annoyed at the waiting time. Does she want to see me or not, she asked herself, but she followed the serving woman nonetheless as she gestured towards the interior of the complex. Ilya was led to a house next to the castle. It was still impressive, but she was certainly a little disappointed she wouldn't be entering the real residence. Please wait here, Lady Folkspear will be with you shortly, the woman bowed slightly, and left Ilya standing inside one of the house's rooms. You've got to be kidding me. She closed her eyes, trying to focus on the past three days of quiet, calming nature before sitting down in one of the fancy-looking chairs that adorned the very beautiful furnished room. Paintings on the wall showed different, presumably important members of the Folkspear house, but Ilya was more interested in the mounted bear head with antlers. Where can I find something like that? Can I ride it? Just then, a knock on the door got her attention. A woman in traditional maid outfit entered the room with a pot in her hands. An unfamiliar yet somehow nostalgic scent filled Ilya's nose as she unconsciously got up from the chair. Coffee, she thought, advancing on the pot. The woman swiftly put it down on the table and poured two cups before bowing and leaving the room again. Ilya sat down and grabbed one of the cups. Smelling it, there was a distinct difference to the beverage that she knew and loved. She took a sip and was intrigued. Not quite, but it's the closest anything here has come so far. The door opened again three minutes later, and Alice entered with a big smile on her face. She was followed by a man in what Ilya could only describe as a suit. Ilya, I'm so glad you could make it. How have you been? Alice greeted her merrily. That's rather chipper, despite everything that's happened to her. Maybe she's trying to forget? Well, it's her decision, so I'll play along. Ilya got up from her chair to greet the girl and took her in a powerful bear hug. Hey, Alice, did you miss your ride? So much that you had to send a letter my way, she asked. Then she noticed a nervous shiver run through the girl when they hugged. She quickly let go and set some distance between them. My ride? Oh, yes. No, not quite. Although the job I mentioned has turned into somewhat of an emergency, I'm afraid. We'll talk about it later, though. Do tell me about the attack first. Were you there when it happened? They talked for nearly an hour, sharing stories about their lives. Ilya's travels and progress made Alice's studies and adventures... Oh, Ilya's travels and progress and Alice's studies and adventures in healing magic... Ilya found out that the coffee-like beverage was called Saya, and was a, spe was a specially brewed tea that was rather famous in Dawn Tree. So what's this emergency job you mentioned? The reason you got me here? Ilya asked, while pouring herself another cup of Saya. Oh, it's spelled S-A-A-I-H. It's a rather complicated situation. Have you ever heard of the Sleeping Plague? Ellis asked, her tone changing from jolly to serious. Ilya shook her head and started to sip her tea. No wonder, considering it's a rare disease that only ever pops up in cities right around Karth. The problem is that conventional healing methods don't work on it. Normally, this wouldn't be an issue. There aren't many deaths attributed to that disease every year, after all, but... My sister contracted it. She looked away thoughtfully and continued after a short pause. We currently have no cure. I think the folk spears might even be the only ones with the knowledge of the disease's existence. She paused again, looking nervous. We, uh, 
researched it after my sister fell ill. It's so rare that very few books even mention it. What we do note, though, is that there is that the Tallinn quite certainly had a cure. This is where you come into play. We discovered a new Tallinn rune about two months ago. It's bigger than any rune we've ever discovered before, and it's right in Folkspear territory. Alice smiled a bitter smile. I'm afraid I've sent everyone I could trust or afford to into the rune already to look for a possible cure and bring back any artifacts, machines, herbs, or mushrooms that can be found. None have returned, and now my family won't do more. So if you go, you'll be going in alone. If you find any teams inside, you could join them, but I remember you were alone in the forest too, so I thought... The girl was running over her own words now, getting quite worked up about the issue. It's fine, Alice. I do prefer to explore alone anyway. Who are the Talene, though? I apologize if it should be common knowledge, Ilya said, holding one of Alice's hands in her own. She was happy to explore a dungeon either way, all the better if she could help a friend in the process. The young noble's eyes widened a little at the question, but she quickly focused again. I forgot about your strange remote healing order. The Talene were an ancient dwarven civilization. We found ruins all over Elos. They were highly advanced in technology and magic, different from what most people use today, she explained. Sure, I can check it out, Ilya said. I'm pretty good at running away should something dangerous show up, and some new ruins to explore might be exactly the thing I've been looking for. I can leave to start the search immediately. How do I identify a possible cure? And you don't want me to see her first? Maybe I can do something. My healing is a bit different from the norm. I'm afraid that's not possible, Alice said, shaking her head. We've consulted every healer in the city and some outside. The, the disease has been researched for decades in secret and nothing was found. My family is unaware of you being here, and they wouldn't allow a wayward healer to walk in and look at her, even if you did save me before. She had a pained grimace before continuing. We're not sure how to identify the cure, sadly. That's why you should simply map out the ruins or clear out whatever machines and traps you can. Mark possible places of interest or machines too big to carry on the map. Take any machine, device, or artifact with you that you can or that seems out of the ordinary. And of course, any mushrooms or herbs. And most importantly, don't die. Talene runes are incredibly dangerous. Their defensive mechanisms and machines rival the strongest beasts you'll stumble upon in the cave systems. Alice looked troubled. Perhaps she's feeling guilty about asking for such a dangerous favor. Thinking of the basilisk, Ilya shook her head and, and to get the thought out of her head. I can just run away should something like that happen this time. Another benefit of being alone. It's okay. If it's not possible to see her, that's fine. Still, do consider it if I don't find a cure. I have everything I need with me already. Is it all right if I leave some unimportant things here so I can have more space in my pack? Ilya asked. Upon Alice's nod, she started to remove the books she'd bought from Splicer from her backpack. She also set aside some of the food she'd brought from Sela. Jamie, please get me the map of the cave system, Alice told the, the suited man she had come in with and then turned back to Ilya. You should find the ruins without issue. The entrance to the cave system is at the very bottom of the city. You can simply go down and you'll find it, or ask around. She finished as Jamie returned with a big map. This is the most accurate map we have at the moment, Miss Spears, he said as he placed the map on the table. He handed her a smaller version as well. This replica is for you, but you're free to copy, copy your own version as well. Ilya chose to quickly sketch the map into her notebook, but to also keep the replica she got from Jamie. Mac-ups were never a bad thing after all. I'll be on my way then, she said when she was done. I'll bring back whatever I can. Don't worry too much, she finished, and hugged the girl again. I'll be back in a jiffy. Ilya quickly got up and left the room, ready to take on some ancient dwarven machines, and it was even for a good cause. And that is the end of chapter 33. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have fun, guys.